In this presentation, we will generate and analyze one of the most common reports that we will be using all the time, that being the balance sheet. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in our demo company dashboard. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet as well as the income statement, our standard two financial statement reports, the major two financial statement reports. We're going to go to the accounting dropdown. They're probably in our favorite reports here. We're going to be starting off with the balance sheet report, opening up the balance sheet report. When it opens, I'm then going to right click on the tab up top. We're going to be duplicating that tab up top. Then I'll go dip back to the tab to the left. We're going to do the same for the income statement. I'm going to select the drop down for the accounting. We're going to go down to that income statement. We're going to go back up top to the tab and right click on that tab. And we're going to duplicate that tab. We're going to be focusing in here on the balance sheet. So we're going to just, we've generated the balance sheet. Now we want to just kind of discuss what the balance sheet is. What are the components of the balance sheet? How is it constructed? in uh, the accounting software and what's the relationship between the balance sheet and income statement so overall just remember the balance sheet and the income statement those are going to be the fundamental financial statement reports every other report is basically going to be tying into in some way the balance sheet and uh, the income statement that's why we're going to open up these reports pretty much every time we do anything to just see what the effect is on the fundamental reports balance sheet income statement we also might use a trial balance at later presentations which basically combines these reports together so we can see you know a, a quicker kind of uh, summary of what happens balance sheet report balance sheet shows what is happening at a certain point in time so where do we stand at a certain point in time as opposed to the income statement which is a performance report which will show you know how we did over a time frame so just recall that the header on the balance sheet will pretty much always be we've got the balance sheet we're gonna have the company name it's gonna be as of a specific date note we only have one date up top note up top we only have one date up here we have no uh, selection as to a beginning date on the balance sheet as opposed to the profit and loss or income statement where we do have a beginning date and that's because the income statement is measuring something over a time frame. It needs a beginning and an end. The balance sheet, you really only need an end. You know, you're probably making the balance sheet at the end of the month, but you don't need to say, you know, it could be for, you know, the ending of the lifetime period up until this point in time. It doesn't matter. It's still as of this point in time. So it could be the year ended, the month ended, uh, you know, the day ended. Still, if, it's, if the same end, whatever that end is December 31st, 2019, in this case, the beginning doesn't matter doesn't matter if it's month ended year end you know lifetime ended as of december 31st 2019 because it's as of that point in time uh in in the time frame so also note you can hold control down and zoom in if you so choose so like i'm at like one two five on the zoom here that's kind of where i like to be at the one two five on the zoom the components of the balance sheet will be assets the liabilities and the equity section so the software is going to be grouping all of our financial transactions and put them into the format assets, liabilities, and equity. Recall that the assets represent what the company owns, basically has claim to what the company has or the business has, whoever it's set up as a you know sole proprietorship company, uh, partnership. The liabilities represent you know so other people having claims to basically those assets. So notice that the total assets, of course, are the 15, 5, 70, 72, 79. That equals the liabilities and equity. So the assets equal to liabilities and equity assets you can think of as what the company has liabilities and equity kind of represent who has claim to those assets. In other words, the company has 15,572.79 third party people liabilities people other than the owners of the organization organization have claim of 8,343.02 of it. The difference between those two or the portion of the claim that is own, owned by the owners of the total assets of the 15572.79 uh, is owned in the equity section of 7229.77. So that's kind of just the general layout of the balance sheet. And if you go back up top, then we're going to subgroup these, these items down. So as we start to make uh, accounts, when you start to add accounts, what you want to be thinking of, anytime you make something in the general general ledger or add an account, put another account into the, the general ledger, you want to have a general idea of where is that account going to pop up on the balance sheet and the income statement. In other words, if we go back to the first tab over here and we go to uh, the accounting dropdown and we take a look at our chart of accounts, uh, the most important thing is when you when you create a chart of accounts or create a new account is the account type because the account type 
is where it's going to line up on balance sheet or income statement, right? So, so anytime you make a new account, you want to think, okay, well, what account type should this be? Because it's got to show up somewhere on the balance sheet and on the income statement. First question, should it be on the balance sheet or income statement? If it's on the balance sheet, then should it be an asset liability or equity account? If it's an asset account, then we can further break that asset account down into subcategories such as, is it a, a check-in account, you know, a cash type of account? Is it an accounts receivable type of account? Is it like a fixed asset type of account, a depreciable asset type of account? These are just some of the main categories. Obviously, this balance sheet is not very, comp you know, there's not a whole lot going on here, right? We got the asset, <laughs> we got the accounts receivable, and we got the fixed assets. But these are the three major categories that you will have. If you go into the checking account, you have some characteristics, of course, with the checking account that are going to be specific to the checking account in that, uh, the checking account, cash account, has the most of things affecting it, right? Every cycle is going to be affecting the checking account in some way. That We saw the customer cycle, the vendor cycle, the employee cycle. They all have cash involved in some way in it. So if you look at the type of sources, the type of source information that will be involved in cash, you'll see different kind of forms or data input forms. You've got the, pay, the payable payment form. Uh, that's money going out here. You've got the receivable payment with the money going in. The payable payment and it looks like these are the major two we have the spend money here uh type of type of information that's going into uh the source document the type of forms that are going to be that are going to feed into the cash so in other words cash is going to be involved in many cycles i'm going to go back to uh the balance sheet the the next item we have on the balance sheet is we can group things in terms of accounts receivable Accounts receivable is going to be an important account because it's it's more specific, of course. It represents people owing us money. Note that if you're on a complete cash basis, you will not have accounts receivable because you're, you're not going to be tracking who owes you money. You're not going to put any financial transaction in until you get money, until cash is affected. So if you look at the accounts receivable, then you'll have much more uh, specificity, specificity in terms of the type of documents that are going to be involved in it. So the source documents, you've got the receive payment. And the invoice that's basically it right the money should be going in out in out and you should be able to kind of match these these things out it should be very much more uniform in nature than the than the checking account and then i'm going to go back to our uh, balance sheet next we have the fixed assets those are going to be like the long-term type of assets like the computer equipment here those are things that we're going to purchase typically for larger dollar amounts that are going to be affecting more than one time period and therefore we're not going to expense them even if we pay cash at the beginning because they're more of kind of like an investment that will be helping us generate revenue in the future if we were to expense them then what we would be doing is we would have a, a big expense in one period that would lower net income in one period like one month but it would be a distortion if you were to compare that to the next month because really that thing that you purchase is going to benefit multiple months in the future. Therefore, we got to put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it. So that has a, another kind of special characteristic. It's going to be a long-term kind of asset as opposed to like a current asset. Because we're not, we can't really spend the, the equipment in order to get cash. We could sell it, but not you know it takes a little time to do that. It's not a very liquid asset. We have it on the books as an investment to help us generate revenue in the future. Then we have the liabilities. We have the accounts payable. The, and that's going to be our, you know, the main kind of liability. It once again is an accrual account. And that represents us putting bills in the system that we owe that we have not yet paid. So, so like with the accounts receivable, uh, it's an accrual account. And if you, if you were just to simply pay the bills, being a cash system, you wouldn't have the accounts uh, payable. Like with the accounts receivable, it's going to be very more stringent in terms of what's going on with it, as opposed to something like cash, which has a lot of things going on. Cash is the one account that has, you know, a whole lot of different things happening with it the accounts payable a bill is going to increase it and then you'll pay the bill right and then it goes up with the bill and it's going to go down when you pay let's take a look at it we'll go into the accounts payable and here we have it so so similar kind of activity here that if we take a look at the source documents you want to get a feel for you know what a, you know what are the source documents that are going to be affecting each of these type of accounts and some of the accounts are very specific so if you start with cash you're going to go, wow, this is going to take forever because every account's going to have all these different things affecting it. No, that's just kind of cash, right? Every other account is pretty, you know, exactly what's going in and out of it. It's, it's not like cash. It's, it's got a very, it's cyclical, just like we looked at those cycles. So every other, every other account's pretty specific, right? This one's going to be going, we have uh, the payment. So we've got in a payment invoice, right? 
So it's going to be going up and down. And like with the receivable, we should be able to match these up. In other words, people are basically billing us, increasing the payable, and then we pay the bill, decreasing the payable. All right. That's going to be the, the standard uh, the, the standard accounts payable type of information. And then we have other kind of liabilities. Another common one would be the sales tax. So if we're collecting sales tax uh, in the U.S., we, we would be sales tax on, on, on uh, goods. If we're selling goods in the United States, then we have to collect sales tax. Often it's by region, by state, and the software will help you with that. And then until we pay the state or, you know, the government, whoever, you know, the local government, whoever, you know, is telling us we need to <laughs> give them money, then we have to add it up as a liability and then pay that out. And then the difference is going to be the equity account. So the equity account down here, you can think of equity in total. Though The thing that's confusing about equity is that, uh, you know, it depends on the type of organization as to the format of, the, of what the equity section will look like. But if you think of equity as a total, it's pretty much the same thing. In other words, if you're a sole proprietor, you might call it uh, owner's equity or, you know, or, or a capital account you know, one capital account, right? If you're a partnership, it's going to be partners equity, partnership equity, or you have multiple capital accounts. If it's a, a corporation, then you may have some, you may have retained earnings. It's typically going to be called retained earnings. You can call it all equity. Notice what they're going to call it here in the zero software saying, hey, this is all in the equity section. I'm not going to change the name to owner's equity, stockholder's equity, partner's equity, it's all, it's all going to be equity. If you think of equity as a whole, as if one person owned the company, not always the case. It is the case in a sole proprietorship, not the case in a partnership. Uh, you have multiple owners, right? Not the case in a corporation. You have multiple owners. But if you think about all those owners as one person, one kind of ownership entity, then equity is pretty much the same thing, no matter what type of organization you're talking about. It's going to be assets minus liabilities. You can think of it. Here's what the company has. Here's who they, what they owe to other people other than owners. The difference is what is owed to the owners. Or you can think of it as here's the total assets. Who has claim to those total assets? Well, the liability people other than the owners have this much of it. And then the, then the, the owners have claim of this month, the owners of, as a whole. And then you got to get into, okay, well, you know, how do we break up that, that amount that's owed to the owners amongst the owners, whether they be partners or corporation. And that's where you're going to get into, you know, different capital accounts. If it's a partnership or, uh, or dealing with retained earnings, if it's a corporation, so, so here, zero typically defaults to the retained earnings and retained earnings is, is going to be the account that everything rolls over into. So the net income is going to be tied into retained earnings. And that's the other kind of most confusing component of, um, of an equity section is the idea of how, is, how does it relate to the profit and loss? How does the balance sheet relate to the profit and loss? So here's the retained earnings. That's going to be basically the, 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 the total equity kind of account that everything's going to roll into. And if you're a sole proprietorship and you'd rather call it um, uh, a capital account uh, or, or an equity account or owner's equity, you could go in there and rename it as owner's equity. And if you're a partnership and you have multiple capital accounts, then you could set up basically multiple capital accounts and you'd have to basically do an adjustment to split the income as it goes into the, the capital account. So we're not going to get into that now, but just note that this is, the, is going to be the, the major account. Now, what is this up top where it says current year earnings? Zero, like QuickBooks does this too, this isn't an account that usually you would see on the balance sheet. You don't usually see uh, current year earnings on the balance sheet. But the software is trying to say, hey, look, this is how it ties into the income statement. So what they're trying to say is the income statement is kind of part of the balance sheet. The balance sheet is as of a point in time, and the income statement is giving some more detailed information, in essence, about the balance sheet. It's giving timing information. So this, this number here will tie into the income statement. If I was to take the income statement... That's 686220 or 10. And if I go to the income statement for 2019, which is last year, I'm going to say I want last fiscal year. And then scroll down to the bottom. Uh, if we get that 686210. Uh, so this income statement then is the activity, what happened over the period of January through December that feeds into the point in time, the point in time of what is owed basically to the owners as of uh, the end of the time period, December 31st. So that's going to be this amount. Now, if I, if I roll this over to the, to the next uh, time period, to the next uh, period, this amount here is, is going to roll in. So if I was to take, for example, uh, if I was to take this 6862.1 plus the 367.67, that's the 722977, right? 
And if I was to, if I was to roll into the next year and say I was, I was going to go 2020, let's see if I can do it just in January and then update this report. So now you'll see that the retained earnings is now that's uh, 7229.77, right? Because the, the last year's current year's earnings roll into retained earnings. So that's what's always going to happen. And that's a benefit. It's also kind of a problem sometimes because uh, this retained earnings number is usually reported as the retained earnings, which includes the current year earnings in it. You know, it's not usually broken out in a balance sheet. And if you have different partners or something like that, uh, then then you're going to have to say, well, how, you know, you really want that uh, current year earnings broken out by by the partners, you know, not in a separate number. So you have to do some adjustments and think about that. But it does give you a good idea of the relationship between the balance sheet and the income statement. So I'm going to bring this back down to the 31st and say update. So that gives us just basically an overview of the balance sheet and what the balance sheet looks like here in zero.